Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday broadcast. If you spend any time at all watching the news, then you know that we're in a battle constantly. It's not just a political or cultural battle, but at its root, it is a spiritual battle. And our enemy is not one party or another. Our enemy is Satan himself, the father of all lies. But the good news is we don't have to defeat this enemy because Jesus has already done that. Satan is a defeated foe. What we have to do is demonstrate his defeat. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that in today's message. You're going to learn how to deal with your adversary and become victorious. That's coming up next, so I hope you'll stay tuned. But before we open the Word of God today, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song, It's My Desire. It's my desire to be like Jesus. It's my desire to be like Him. so precious to forgive me so it's my Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Our text for today's message is going to come from 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. My, my topic today and what I want you to get out of this teaching is how to deal with your adversary. Everybody has adversaries, but I want, to, I want you to see who your adversary is and how to deal 
with that adversary. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. If you have your Bible, follow along with me. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, we can learn several things here, this first verse, and we'll read the next one in just a minute. Be sober, be vig- vigilant, be alert, beware, be wise, be awake. Your adversary, the devil. First of all, it tells us who our adversary is. Our adversary is, is not the uh, next door neighbor. It's not your boss. It's not your child, your parent. It's not a political party. Your adversary is the devil himself. It says your adversary as a roaring lion doesn't say is one. It says he is like one walking about seeking whom he may devour. So we're told right off the bat that Satan cannot devour everybody. He's he's looking for someone to devour. He has to find someone that's weak, ignorant, stupid, pliable, soft, willing. He's looking for someone that is devourable. Then the next verse tells us what to do. And then we're going to magnify each one of these points in a minute. It says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Notice, resist steadfast in the faith. If you're taking notes, write that down. Here's how you deal with your adversary. You resist steadfast in the faith. Now, let's define adversary. I I, I looked it up and I wrote this definition down. Listen to this. Who is your adversary? Your adversary is an opponent. Um, As in a lawsuit, your opponent, someone that is against you, adversary, Satan, your enemy. We've already been told who the adversary is. Now, let's read Revelation chapter 12 and let's find out how Lucifer earned that title as adversary. Revelation 12, beginning with verse 7. There was a war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now here's Satan. He is known as the dragon. He is uh, called the serpent. He's a deceiver. He is your adversary, not your advocate, your adversary. He is always against you. The Bible says that he was a liar from the beginning and the truth is not in him. Let me just tell you something about your adversary. Just just give you a a, a thumbnail sketch Uh, in in crime. uh, They will do a criminal criminal background check on somebody and they they do a profile. Here's Satan's profile. He wanted to be God. It tells us this in Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. He wanted to be God, so he tried to dethrone God. Uh, In his heart is rebellion. He's a liar. The truth is not in him. Even though his name, Lucifer, refers to uh, a star or a morning star, Lucifer, Satan, never had any light uh, or brightness of his own. He He was a reflection of the light of God. Satan has no light of his own. He is not, he is not a, uh, a, lumin- a luminous entity. He is reflecting the light of, of God, or was. He's not now. He's, he's pure darkness, pure evil. Um, he, he reflected the light of God. Uh, Jesus is the light. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Uh, Lucifer was a a reflection of that light. 
The Bible says in Colossians that we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. That's Satan's kingdom because there's no light. And we've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son, the kingdom of light. So Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. He's the bright and morning star. Lucifer is dark, darkness, death, lying, deceiving. There's no good in Satan. There's no bad in God. There's no truth in the devil. Uh, there's no uh, lie in God. The Bible says God cannot lie. It doesn't say he won't. It says he can't. Uh, by the same token, Lucifer cannot tell the truth. The truth is not in him. You, you cannot reproduce what is not in you. So that's your adversary. I've told people for years, if you want to know uh, what's going on with you, whatever's happening in you, just take a yellow sheet, uh, a yellow pad, draw a line down the middle and put everything that steals, kills and destroys on one side and everything that brings life on the other side. And, and, and you can differentiate between Satan and God. So everything that comes to steal, kill and destroy is the devil. Everything that comes to bring life is God. Now, Satan sometimes will wrap his deception in a, in a you know, a candy coated, sugar coated, you know, to make you think that there's some truth in it. But the ultimate result and the reality is, is that it's full of death and destruction because he's your adversary. Now, how do you deal with your adversary? In the book of Ephesians, let's turn over there. And you will see in uh, chapter 6 and verse, uh, let's go to verse 11. Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. It, it says our enemy is not flesh and blood. Our enemy is not people. Even though you might think that, you might think your son and daughter is against you. You might think your parents are against you. You might think your, your boss is against you, a fellow employee. You might, uh, you might think the, uh, a, a political party is against you. Your enemy is not flesh and blood. That's not who you are being attacked by. Now, the enemy is your adversary. He may use those people. He definitely uses people because that's the only way that he can express himself. Listen, I learned this a long time ago when Jeannie and I used to minister deliverance. And we would minister deliverance to people. And these people had demonic spirits in them. Where the Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. We also are used by the Holy Spirit to express the love of God. But if you find an individual that is full of hate, anger, murder, robbery, lying, cheating, cursing, any, anything that you want to fill in the blank, many times this is a demonic spirit manifesting their nature. You have demon spirits of lying, demon spirits of stealing, uh, murder, rape, robbery, uh, uh, all kinds of crimes and deception. Those are demon spirits manifesting themselves through a human person because the human person can express all of those. And that, that is not the nature of the human. That's the nature of the demon. And then I've tried to get law enforcement, psychologists, psychiatrists, all this, over the years to understand that you're, you're, if you're dealing with, quote, a multiple personality, you're actually dealing with demon spirits. Uh, I've even seen uh, recordings, uh, educational recordings of people, psychiatrists, psychologists, dealing with uh, dual personalities, entities. And many times it looks like one of them, one of the personalities is asleep and the other personality is awake. And then all of a sudden, the roles change. You've seen movies made about it. That is not a psychological psych a psychiatry problem. That is a demonic problem. It manifests in the 
you know, the, the psychic and so forth. And there, therefore, we medicate, we treat, we whatever. But it's really the adversaries, really the demon spirits. You get the demon spirits out of the people, and they'll be just as normal as you are. <laughs> I hesitate to say that because some people aren't what are considered normal, but they'll be normal. So your adversary is the devil. It's not the person. You might not like what a political party is doing or a representative of the government or a constitutional officer or uh, a judge. What? But you have to realize those people are influenced. Some of them are possessed. They're oppressed. They're um, depressed. They're manipulated by evil spirits. That's why the Bible says you're not warring against flesh and blood. So how do you deal with them? What do you do? Well, Peter said, we read it, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, resist steadfast in the faith. So what do you do when you discern your adversary is coming against you? First of all, you stand against. You resist. That's what resist means. Stand against. Uh, you oppose. You withstand. Now, let me read Ephesians 6, 10. Uh, I mean, Ephesians 6, and let's go down to verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand. Stand with an opposing force. Stand having your loins girt about with the truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Let me give you an example of this. One day I was up visiting a church member in the hospital. And I walked by this meeting room. It was where they have special meetings, conference, whatever, in the hospital. And there was a sign outside the, uh, the conference room on a, on a podium. It was like this. And on the front of the sign, it said, how to cope with cancer. And I went on by that, and I, I, I couldn't help but think about it. I thought to myself, how to cope with cancer? I, I don't, I don't want to learn how to cope with cancer. I, I realize what the hospital's trying to do. They're trying to teach people. But the word cope, if you look it up, means to live with. And I thought, they're teaching people how to live with cancer. And to cope means, and let me use this example, to cope with something means to exert, let's say this is the, the cancer or the problem. To cope with it means you apply an equal amount of pressure Therefore, nothing moves. You're not getting rid of the cancer. You're coping with it. You're living with it. But that's what, not what the Bible says to do. The Bible says to overcome whatever the enemy's throwing against you. Whatever's born of God overcomes the world. To overcome means to apply a greater force of pressure than the pressure that's coming against you. If this is cancer and it's coming against you, to cope means to live with. To overcome means to exert a greater pressure than the cancer and thus moving it out of the way. How do you do that? Well, you first have to recognize what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, not flesh and blood, not the human person, but the adversary is the devil or demon spirits that are working against you. How do you deal with them? How do you deal with your adversary? You know, the Bible is full of examples of how to do this. Uh, you'll have to search them out, look them up. I've, I've looked a, a, a few of them up for you in Isaiah 50, 2 Corinthians 12. It tells us to that we have the right to condemn every tongue that rises against us in judgment. So anytime there's judgment or adversarial activity towards you, you know it's not necessarily the person you get the demon spirit disabled 
and that person will, will, you know, have no desire, no weapon formed against you. How do you do that? The Bible says you have the right to condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. So if your adversary is rising against you in judgment, or if there's a false narrative or a false report coming against you, you have the right as a believer to condemn those tongues. How do I do that, Pastor Caldwell? In prayer, in prayer to God over this situation, you say, Father, according to your word, I have the right to condemn every tongue that rises against me in judgment. I don't condemn the person. I condemn the tongue, what they're saying, their words. Let the words fall to the ground. I condemn that tongue that's rising against me in judgment, that it will be shown to be in the wrong. That's how you deal with your adversary. You resist. You stand against. Steadfast means solid, stable, strong. The Bible says in Romans 4.20 that Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You don't wimp around. You don't say, oh, God, would you please help me? You don't say, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm so unworthy. No, no, you're not unworthy if you're born again. Jesus is your Lord. He's your advocate general. He's there to help you. The Holy Spirit is your helper. So what do you do? You stand against it in prayer. You stand against these uh, tongues that are rising against your judgment. And it doesn't have to be somebody uh, on social media bullying you or telling stories or lying. It can be a false narrative at, in a medical report. You're not denying that the, the symptoms exist. You're denying their right to exist. The Bible says, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah 53 says you were healed. If you were, you are. So what do you do? Anything that rises against you in judgment. Isaiah says, who has believed our report? Just because you got the report doesn't mean you have to accept it. Oh, the report may be true. Faith doesn't deny what exists. Faith denies its right to exist in lieu of the promise that you have that you've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. So you resist it. You condemn it. You condemn, condemn the tongues. You resist steadfast, solid, stable, strong, and in the faith, standing on the word of God. This, this is your weapon, the sword of the spirit. Everything that you stand fast, everything that you release in faith out of your mouth has to be based on this. This is your faith. This is uh, in the faith, in the faith of Jesus Christ, that he has done everything you need. He has saved you. He's healed you. He's delivered you. He's justified you. He's prospered you. Everything that Jesus did for you on the cross at Calvary, that's the legal side of redemption. Everything he's already provided for you. In uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So everything that belongs to you, everything that is yours, you take it. That's the vital side of redemption. You have to have both, legal and vital. So the legal is what God's already done for you. The vital is how you access that grace. Faith, grace. Grace is what God's already done. Faith is how you access it. And then last uh, as you begin to trust God to deliver you from your adversary, notice that you have to trust God and trust his grace. You have to trust this. You have to believe in this. You have to believe that what God said was true. You speak it out of your mouth. You believe it in your heart. You put it into your spirit, goes through and renews your mind. And you stand against your adversary. Just because your adversary came and said, oh, you're going to die. You're not going to make it. You're going to uh, fail. You're going to go broke. You're going to, you just have to say, shut up, devil. I'm not listening to you. I am not taking what you say. I am taking what God said. And that's how you deal with your adversary. Now, before we close today, we recently received a prayer request from one of our viewers. Uh, we, we, we receive these prayer requests all the time. Uh, this viewer shared with us that she struggles with depression and anxiety and asked us to pray for her. Well, I want to do that right now. And in lieu of what I've just taught you, and I know there are many more of you watching this program who share the same struggles, 
now I want you to receive your deliverance. So for all of you who are dealing with anxiety and depression, let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I take authority as a believer over this depression and anxiety. And you spirits of fear and anxiety and depression, you loose, my sister. You loose every person right now at the sound of my voice. You loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you receive that prayer, just stand up, get up, lift up your hands, say, thank you, Father. I receive Pastor Caldwell's prayer. I receive my deliverance. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And you begin to rejoice and thank God for your deliverance. We're here to pray for you and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, let us know about it. You can email us at prayer at vtntv.com or you can call 1-800-264-2525. We'd love to pray for you and uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you. Now stay tuned and I'll be right back after this message. When God spoke, creation came into being. He created man in his own image so man could operate the word system the same way he did. God established a system of communication that uses words to create. God is looking today for a bold people who will learn to use their authority in the earth and speak His Word. A people who will speak words of faith and power to accomplish His purpose in their lives and in the world. Pastor Gobble's book, The Word System, dives into how our faith and speaking God's Word can change any situation. To order your copy of The Word System, call toll-free at 1-800-264-2525 or log on to vtntv.com. The book is just $8 plus shipping and handling. The words you speak influence every area of your life. Speak creatively today and use The Word System that God has given you. I want to really encourage you to get your copy of The Word System. As I said, it's a reprint. First uh, publishing was 1981. It's a revelation of the word system. God operates according to a system. And these six chapters will help you understand how you're supposed to operate in this life. VTN is on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch online. To watch this video on demand, log on to vtntv.com and click watch. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen.